Coming up on Tech News Today, if nobody's using Carrier IQ, why does it exist? What is it doing? We'll look into this today. Also, the AT&T says the FCC lacks all credibility. Wow, three-letter acronym fight. And if you use a phone, you're all screwed, according to Julian Assange. That and more coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Thursday, December 1st, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zakta. And I'm Jason Howell. And this is Scott Johnson. There he is Yay. right there. I see him. <gasps> wow. The Scott Johnson Experience. Thanks for having me back, guys. Always a pleasure to hang with you three. Scott Four. Johnson from The Instance Star Wars Edition as well oh, as Oh, yeah, it starts t uh, today. So if you're looking forward to that hot new MMO property, you might want to check it out. Isn't he yeah. podcast award winning, on the frog pants? We, we are all podcast award winners here today. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. How's it feel? <laughs> you're hanging with winners now. How's yeah. it feel to be in the winner's circle? It feels I'm, pretty good, yeah, although... Yeah. I'm most excited to be to say today that my debt is repaid to uh, uh, to you guys because every time I come on here, I have such a good time that when I leave, I feel like my good time is not what it could be. So I'm glad to be back, Jason Howell. You no longer owe me five bucks. I'm on the show. Here we go. Oh wow, that no. was unexpected. Check that one off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair. Enough. I don't know what I'm talking about. What the show does uh, is every day we take all of the stories in the world and uh, we all read them. Every and then we have someone one. who's really smart, like Scott today, come on and share the perspective so that you don't have to waste your whole day reading everything on the internet. We do that for you and then boil it down into the essentials. Uh, starting off today with AT&T's fierce rebuttal. Of the FCC report we talked about yesterday. This is regarding AT&T T-Mobile's merger. Uh, AT&T issued a statement in response to FCC's publications of their findings about the T-Mobile merger. The commission's, uh, uh, they are, I'm sorry, AT&T Senior Executive Vice President of External and Legislative Affairs, Jim Ciccone, said, we believe that the utter absence of balance is clear and demonstrates that the document lacks all credibility. And Oof. they went on from there. It's a, it's a, Tell me how you really feel. not quite as long as the FCC's uh, damning piece from yesterday, uh, but they pick it apart. They say that uh, uh, in response to the FCC's claim that the AT&T AT would be forced to expand LTE beyond 80% anyway, uh, they say the report apparently assumes a high enough level of competition exists in rural areas to force us to go above 80%, but there's not enough competition in the cities. It's very fragile. Well, which is it, FCC? Is, the, is there enough competition or isn't there? Which is kind of a false choice. Uh, th there's a lot of rhetorical tricks going on here. Also says it appears the FCC did not inform the president that in their view, this was not a needed or worthy objective because it was apparently going to happen anyway regarding rollout of wireless Which to, the Verge to rural pointed out areas. is, well, that's rather snide. It was a little, very snide. Yeah. Uh, lots of uh, lots of point by point stuff here on the spectrum crunch uh the report's authors find this evidence inconvenient and simply claim it does not exist uh, and, and they claim the fcc under reports regional spectrum holders influence by averaging across regions now all of this is is rhetorically picking uh, on uh what the fcc's opinions were about the merger however in the end, they said, in this circumstance, we understood the issues such a combination might raise. And we made clear, publicly and privately, our readiness to address those concerns. So even so, though they just said that all those concerns were a bunch of hooey, mm. in the end, they're like, but, but we'll still fix it. Please let us still buy T-Mobile. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really read it that way. I read it as, uh, we understand the issues, 
that might have been raised, but the FCC is just calling out stuff that isn't true. Well, they, they are saying that. You're right. But they're saying our readiness to address those concerns, which right. is, there, look, there are going to be concerns. We're mad that you made this public after we pulled a jerk move by trying to withdraw a request mm -hmm. at the last minute so you wouldn't make it public. But in the end, there are obviously concerns and we'll, we'll adapt. It's great psychology going on here because you can say, well, AT&T would never go through the trouble of being so fiery about this rebuttal unless they really made good points. But at the same time, they're just mad. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if any of the redacted stuff in the FCC statement would address any of the points AT&T brought up. Because the, we Spectrum the, one, the Spectrum one would. We didn't get the full, it was 190 pages that was released, but not all of it's in there. So, I mean, AT&T could have the option of, well, we're going to make this point that we know that it's covered up. AT&T came back at the FCC saying, you say T-Mobile can get enough Spectrum to go into LTE. It's just mm -hmm. not true. But the FCC's reasoning for that is mostly redacted. And the, the supposition is that T-Mobile would be able to strike partnerships with cable companies like Cablevision to get the spectrum they need to roll out LTE because the cable companies all own a bunch of spectrum. That's actually something Sprint hopes doesn't happen, uh, even though Sprint is objecting to the AT&T T-Mobile merger. Did anyone expect anything less than this kind of response from AT&T, maybe them taking the high road and going... Yeah, we have we we are aware of your concerns. Move ahead, but I mean, do they have to go so? I think that the FCC forced their hand. That yeah, they they're, they, they're on the defense now. The AT and T's whole reason for in the early hours of Thanksgiving trying to withdraw their request was to keep all this stuff from coming into public. So now that it came out into the public, they have to fight it. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, and that's why you see so many rhetorical tricks in what they're saying. Is they're trying to change the perception. Uh, in some cases, they, they counter facts with facts, and they say, look, you, you got your facts wrong. But a lot of it is like, oh, well, you're saying this one thing over here. I guess that means you don't agree with this other thing over here. Those are rhetorical tricks where you're just trying to spin it and make people believe, oh, well, the FCC must not know what they're talking about. Uh, and the FCC, you would think, would at this point rise above it and say, okay, you know, we're done. We're going to back out of this. But on the official FCC Twitter uh, the commission's chief of the Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau, Joel Gurin, wrote, deeply concerned about at ATT public policy, Jay Ciccone comments today. <laughs> I am deeply So they're, so deeply they're all concerned. just playing, they're all just playing public warfare then. It's all about opinion at this point. So if they want this merger that bad and the government has released papers that are in the public hands that make us, you know, raise our eyebrows at at and I don't know what else they do. To, to make their stand. They kind of have to do this because that's sort of the game they're playing. And now they're playing it on Twitter, which seems crazy to me that, you know, a government agency is basically trolling at and <laughs> on Twitter. Well, maybe they're that's deeply just, concerned because they agree with all the at and objections. They just well, said maybe. they're deeply concerned. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, this idea that they say the document lacks all credibility, but then sort of turn around and say will address your concerns means that obviously there's some credibility but i think i think this is all just talk it's in the it end is. it's about you know perception what? and public response and that's this is, it this is all hot air public response you're absolutely right what's going to happen now is that the department of justice is going to show up in court and at&t is going to show up in court and a judge is going to decide whether there's any hope of this merger continuing uh yeah. and they're likely not to decide that it should continue in the current form, and AT&T will then come up with their counteroffer, whatever that is, whether it's a, a joint venture with Deutsche Telekom, which was pro proposed out there, whether it's uh, kind of putting together a new consortium to buy up parts of T-Mobile and split it up a bun bunch of, of a bunch of people. Uh, something is going to happen. That, that's one thing you can be sure of. But we're going to have to wait for that court case uh, to find out what that is. We talked about Carrier IQ yesterday, the software that exists on many phones, and a researcher has found that it pretty much sends everything you do somewhere. We don't know exactly where, but it does track keystrokes, and it does track the content of text messages and sends it out. Uh, today, everyone falling all over themselves to try to make it clear that they aren't the ones involved in the carrier IQ software being on your phone. Uh, Yesterday was all about Android phones. It was, well, the, the demonstration was on an HTC Android phone. Uh, although the researcher said RIM and Nokia also had mm -hmm. this software, RIM says, we don't put the software on our phones and we don't authorize it to be on our phones. So implying if you found it on their phones, wasn't their fault. Uh, Nokia says, we've never added this to our phones. Verizon says we've never put it on any of the phones we carry on our network. Uh, O2, Vodafone, and Orange, France Telecom's uh, service, all said we don't 
put this on any of our phones. We don't use this software. HTC said it doesn't receive data. I mean, they're caught red-handed, right? Because that's the phone in the video. So they said, look, we don't receive this data, and we're looking for ways to turn it off. We, we promise. Uh, also, uh, a new report out today says there are references to Carrier IQ software in iOS 5, which had Apple running uncharacteristically to comment quickly, saying, we used to use it, but we stopped with iOS 5, and we plan to remove it completely in future updates. Isn't that their way of saying, so any of you who had a first generation, a 3G and a 3GS, we were tracking you the whole time? And that's kind of the, well, if you translated it roughly, right? Glass is half right? empty, glass is half full. <laughs> yeah, sure. perhaps you'd like a very secure... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a great way to sell 4S's. Uh, Google Nexus One, the Nexus S, and the Galaxy Nexus, along with the original Zoom tablet, do not contain Carrier IQ software. Uh, a, uh, an earlier CIQ press release, Carrier IQ press release from weeks before this all broke, touts a partnership with Vodafone, Huawei, and NEC, Huawei being that Chinese manufacturer. Uh, Vodafone says, that was a trial. That's ended. We're not doing it anymore either. Uh, nobody wants to come anywhere close to this. In fact, U.S. Senator Al Franken has sent a letter to Carrier IQ's president, uh, Larry Lenhart, asking him to explain exactly what is going on here. What does the software record? Why does it record it? Who does it share it with? And uh, Franken notes, as well as a, uh, a law professor, and he's probably getting it from this law professor, that some of the info Carrier IQ collects may violate federal privacy laws, including the Electronic Communications Privacy Act and the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Big props to Sean Hollister from The Verge, who, full disclosure, is engaged to be married to my sister-in-law, uh, spoke <laughs> with Andrew Coward, the VP of Marketing at, at uh, uh, Carrier IQ. Ha uh, Coward said they have no further comment now, but they will have a comment after they have an external security company conduct independent validation of the privacy implications of what was shown in the video we saw yesterday. How could it be the Carrier IQ, which are like on their web page, they have something like 141 million, they're installed on 101, 141 million phones. Mm -hmm. How could they not have like statements ready to go on this? It's not like they... Because they didn't expect anybody to find it. But I mean, they, their they have... Their first reaction was to send a cease and desist. Their whole, their whole business strategy has obviously been predicated on no one knowing that this exists. No one knows them, so this is, this is a secret that was going to go on for forever? I mean, this is... Is this stranger a business things plan? Have, stranger things have happened. It just seems like a very odd... I mean, if, if they're going out there and they're marketing themselves to carriers and they're saying, look, you want to get stats, and we know that Sprint is one of the companies that uses these guys because Sprint has actually had that statement we talked about yesterday, and everybody else is saying, we've never used these guys. I mean, it, it's, it's strange. Well, it's, it's not like Carrier IQ hasn't said anything. Here's, what they, here's their statement that they have put out, which, the, which Coward was saying, we don't have anything more to say. But their statement was, while we look at many aspects of a device's performance, we are counting and summarizing performance, not recording keystrokes or providing tracking tools. The metrics and tools we derive are not designed to deliver such information, nor do we have any intention of developing such tools. But they have tools that do exactly that. Well, they... they whether or their not anyone's software, using them or not. Their software is uh, collecting this information, and, or uh, actually not even collecting is the right word, sending this information, but they may not be recording it on the other end. Okay, now, that begs but, they, the question, but they right? just said these tools we derive are not designed to deliver information like this, but I think what that's exactly what it's doing. I think what they're talking about is, uh, is the tools that the carrier would have at the other end to look at the aggregated information. Uh, and that and that's that goes back to my guess yesterday that there's an engine that this is an engineering issue where somebody said you know what just yeah. to cover the bases I'm going to send everything the tool at the other end is only going to show certain information but this way when they come back and say hey we now we want to look at like how many text messages were sent per hour in aggregate he can say yeah it's already in there just tweak mm -hmm. this variable it makes it easier right which is why a lot of the carriers might be like seriously we have no idea how to unlock any of this information even if we had it right because Sprint has said... Uh, That's pretty much exactly what they said. You know, they, they, they said yesterday, like, we, we do use Carrier IQ, but we use it just to see network performance, and we don't mm -hmm. use it for tracking. Uh, now, we got an in interesting email from Ian in Atlanta, who's defending Carrier IQ, saying if cell phone carriers wanted to see the content of text messages and browsing history, they could do it at the network level, uh, just by tapping your phone calls and texts at the network level. They wouldn't have to put anything on the phone, uh, the thought that the carriers are secretly logging all of this via third party is a little crazy. Software that logs phone and network performance can be invaluable to carriers honing their networks and phone manufacturers trying to build better products. Should this type of activity be disclosed to users? Absolutely. But let's wait and hear what is officially being done with the data before we start hanging carriers and carrier IQ out to dry. 
Now, one mm -hmm. of the things about when Carrier IQ was uh, shown to be an iOS, the way you can turn it off is by turning off diagnostics and usage in the settings screen. Mm -hmm. I'm, wonder, I'm wondering, I mean, if it, there is that little pop-up that comes up on a lot of phones that says, do you want to help whatever company mm -hmm. by yeah. sending diagnostics? Does this seem much more innocuous when it's, when it's that kind of data? It's like, oh, yeah, that, well, they're sending everything for diagnostics, but I okayed it. I mean, is that, is that actually enough notice to say what you're sending out? Well, you should be able to dig in if you want and say, well, what are you sending mm -hmm. as part of the diagnostics? I, yeah. I, My SMS messages in full? I don't no. mind if they know. Well, I mean, they're going to know for billing purposes anyway how often I send a text message. I don't want them to know what's in it. I don't want that logged. I, and that's the word I was looking for earlier. They're logging, but they're not necessarily recording, mm -hmm. if, that, if that makes any sense. That makes sense. Uh, so, in other words, they, they got a log, and then that log may not get processed in a way that stores all of that information. But the, the, that, the question is, why are they logging this? And I think, I think we see Carrier IQ going, you know what, we're not sure what we're collecting. Yeah. That's why, that's why they're having an outside security firm look at this because they want to be able to come forward and say, okay, this is what we thought was happening. We had an independent party look at it and find out that this is actually what was happening and this is what we're going to do about it, which is the responsible thing to do. Uh, yeah. But the question, uh, the question is, and, and whether I'm right about it being an engineering solution or not, they should never have been recording this information without your knowledge from the beginning. This, the Sprint bit reminds me uh, the little conspiratorial person that lives in me, he's very small and rarely speaks up, but sometimes he Carl. says things. Thank you. Yeah, Carl will call him Carl. D.B. Carl, actually. Um, <laughs> Tom knows what that is. Uh, <laughs> that little guy once in a while will say something, and he's saying to me right now that Sprint's saying, well, we only use it for the performance data. We don't, we don't collect anything else. It's kind of like saying, well, I only get Playboy for the articles <laughs> and not for the photos. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels disingenuous, and the whole thing feels a little weird. Like, Apple sort of admitting that they've just kind of barely taken it out and obviously they knew about it and well why would they take it out if, they, if it's a perfectly innocuous piece of software and they didn't know it was logging or collecting this data well then why take it out like they have uh, there's too much unexplained stuff and that little guy in my head won't shut up i know what you mean ayaz when you said how could they not have had something a little bit more prepared for something like this because this is a sort of story that freaks people out this is the, you know, a privacy advocate's worst nightmare. Like, wait, you're recording everything? Everything on my phone? Every picture that I take? Every message that I send? You know, this, this is, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare situation. And even if they're not doing any of that stuff, they, I mean, you, you have to believe that they truly don't know how their own software works. Or else they'd be prepared to say, okay, okay. Yeah, we knew somebody one right. day would ask this question and here are all the things that we're not doing to ruin your privacy. And that's why it reminds me so much of the Google Wi-Fi collection uh, because Google had no idea that their Street View cars were collecting that information. They, they had to start investigating themselves to figure out what had happened. Uh, so I, I really think that it's something like that. But you're right, it's a nightmare scenario. Let's move on to something different. Same NC here. State University researchers Michael Grace, Yajin Zhu, Xi Wang, and Zhu Shang Zhang published a paper finding Android smartphones from Motorola, HTC, and Samsung don't properly protect privileged permissions from untrusted applications. They looked at the <laughs> HTC Legend, the Evo 4G, the Wildfire S, the Droid, the Droid X, the Epic 4G, the Nexus One, and the Nexus X, uh, Nexus S, uh, and confirmed <laughs> that yes, explicit capability leaks were happening that allowed applications to exploit a public interface or service of another app without making a permission request uh, ha to the user. So if another app had certain permissions that allowed you know geolocation and collecting addresses or manipulating your contact list, malicious apps could kind of hijack those permissions and use them themselves and you would never know that that was happening. Uh, implicit leaks were also found. That's where applications inherit permissions from another application signed with the same digital for certificate. That's only going to happen if you get two applications from the same company. So that's the less of a concern. Uh, but the upshot is an untrusted app on these affected phones can manage to wipe out the user data, send out SMS messages, record user conversations, or obtain user geolocations, all without asking for any permission. So even if you don't have carrier IQ, somebody could put some malware on your phone and do all the same things. Well, that's just, just that's just like a whole bowl of sunshine right now, right? It's, just, it's just all going to get better, right? It's refreshing. Yeah. So I'm being watched if I if I have any phone apparently, or if I run an Android device, I can have apps that are doing this, can be malware. I mean, I've seen. I think there was all these scares in China about malware that did similar things. They could, they were sending out SMSs and they were calling people just to bring up charges. 
uh, this is one of those do, can you prevent you can prevent this though with with not installing certain applications but this is using pre-installed application permissions. Right, so the, the permissions that are hijacked came with stock applications. Mm -hmm. So if you never installed another application, you'd be fine. But uh, if you somehow that? got infected by installing a piece of malware or getting tricked into installing a piece of malware, then those, then those malware applications could hijack the privileges of the stock install. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Google and Motorola have confirmed the vulnerabilities, but we should hasten to point out that the Google reference designs the nexus one and the nexus s did not have the uh the explicit capability leaks uh they had a couple other minor vulnerabilities that weren't of a great concern but they didn't have these big capability leaks uh that the other phones from motorola htc and samsung had samsung and htc are having trouble getting back to the researchers although motorola is cooperating as is the Google. line's busy every time we call it's just keep rings so rings. then somebody's is, deleted all the data on all our phones is that kind of possibly pointing in the direction of the overlays that the different manufacturers are putting onto no these phones? not necessarily it's it creating be, that window it could be the overlays or it might not be it just means yeah. that they are changing the android stock uh, in a way that changes the privileges. So right. they might be doing that because of the overlay. They might be doing right. it for some totally different Or it's different part reason. of just their yeah. general customization, whether it has anything exactly. to do with the overlay or not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, WikiLeaks has posted 287 documents about international surveillance. Uh, and Does Julian it get better at any point? Julian Assange <laughs> said... Who One here day. has an iPhone? Who has a BlackBerry? Who uses Gmail? Well, Everybody you're all raises screwed. Their hands. Uh, and uh, he, uh, That's he, a quote. You're all screwed, he pointed way. to these 287 documents. I know it sounds like something I would make up for someone to say. That's actually a quote. You're right. There it is. Uh, <laughs> the reality is that intelligence operations are selling right now mass surveillance systems for all those products. The 287 documents actually detail uh, proposals for intelligence agencies to use malware to spy on large groups of people. Uh, and, and, you know, the WikiLeaks post's point is this is happening without court surveillance uh, to groups of people that aren't under suspicion. Uh, but the capability is out there to either use unsecured Wi-Fi access points. So if you go to a coffee shop or something, you could fall under the surveillance or to infect you and get, get you through social engineering or some other kind of malware uh, to install the tracking apps that would then be able to track everything you do and report back to the intelligence agents. They're doing the same things that all the hackers want to do. It's <laughs> interesting they threw Gmail in there, um, you know, as kind of the weird outlier that isn't a phone, that isn't a device, um, is something you may use on your device. But that's, that's interesting. I, well, I that's because mean... this is about laptops and desktops as right. much as it is about phones. So why, why but I guess what I'm getting at is I wonder why Gmail is more specifically targeted here than, say, your Yahoo account is, you know, the worst thing ever and is attracting all sorts of nefarious activity. Well, I think he uh, probably just picked a service that he knew a lot of people device. would use. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm, okay. You have a Gmail account? Yeah. Well, you're screwed. You're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're all screwed, toaster, screwed equally, screwed. if we're all yeah, screwed equally, screwed. we're all fine then, right? Well, as long as we're not terrorists, we're fine. Right, okay. If you're a terrorist, you might not be fine. Did you, yeah. did, Jason, I wasn't paying attention, I apologize. Did you show the stills from the Ars Technica uh, uh, document? No, no, because no, 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 no. Cause that, that, that's the one that's really damning. Ars Technica dug up one of these and put, put uh, screenshots up of the PowerPoint presentation where, you, uh, are, where you're actually seeing the pitch to surveillance companies about why they should... Uh, they should actually, you know, here, here's our SSL decryption product. You can key, intercept keys in the application. Decoding possible. Uh, it goes on and there's, there's some stuff about how it can be installed. Social engineering. Zero day exploits. <laughs> injection proxy. Uh, you know, here's, here's what you can do to catch the ne'er-do-wells on Wi-Fi. Uh, you can even track people across different Wi-Fi access points, apparently. I'm sold. I'm, I'm ready to, to get this stuff. So, <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a break, and we'll move quickly through the rest of our discussion stories. But Netflix.com slash twit, 30-day free trial. What more is there to say? Watch a bunch of movies, a bunch of TV shows for 30 days, absolutely free. Unlimited amounts of streaming from Netflix.com. You can get all kinds of popular stuff like Breaking Bad and Walking Dead and, and uh, new movies from uh, all kinds of different movie theaters, uh, movie production houses. Check it out, Netflix.com slash twit. If you already have... Netflix, pass that URL along, pay it forward, because anybody can use it to get the 30-day free trial. And we thank them for their support of Tech News Today.
let's move on to something fun. Google wants to take on Amazon Prime. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, they are in talks with major retailers and shippers to provide a next day for a low fee service that lets consumers shop for goods anywhere on the web, on the web, but still receive orders in a couple of days. So what, they would ju they would shop at a variety of retailers, but just go through Google's system. You probably and in I'm, return, get, I'm they guessing get you would go discount? through the Google product search, uh -huh. and then there would be partners, and then if you're a Google Prime or whatever they call it member. You could get free two-day shipping. Does oh, Amazon? That's interesting. Does Amazon work that way? I mean, I always, I always thought Amazon, the the Prime service they offered was just with Amazon. It wasn't yeah, that they had. Yeah, it is exactly because so it applies to anything you buy within the Amazon. System. Right, it doesn't apply to some things that are from external partners, even right. if you're buying it through Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah. So what Google could do is one up them and say, well, we got multiple partners uh -huh. if you're shopping in Google. And the reason they're doing this is because people are searching directly on Amazon for products now instead of going to Google and searching for products. I'm, I, I, quick survey here. I as when you search for a product, you go to Amazon or Google well, or somewhere else. Well, I already have Amazon Prime, so I'm gonna check Amazon first. See, yeah, well, that's exactly what that's they're what after they want. here. Scott, what about you? Same, Amazon every time. I go Jason? there straight and yeah, don't mess around. Sometimes eBay, usually Amazon. I usually uh, actually do go to Google, and uh, usually at the top of the products results list is an Amazon link. So Jason I'm is a Google fanboy, so that's understandable. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. <laughs> not I'm true. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sarah, what about you? Uh, I th I'm, I'm kind of half and half. There's there's certain products that I just know Amazon will have a good price on, or at least competitive, so I'll go direct. But yeah, if it's just something out of the blue, I wait to see what rises to the top of my Google search. I probably lean towards Amazon these days because you know now that they have ThinkGeek as a partner and Target as a partner. Yeah. So many places that I know, like, oh, well, they're, they're likely to have this. That mm -hmm. I'll look up prices there. I used to use Google to look up prices, but their product search lag, frugal, remember, lagged for so many years. Uh, so this is, this is Google's uh, chance to try to get some of that behavior back. Services expected to go under a pilot test in San Francisco next year. Of course, this is all from people familiar with the matter. So take it with a grain of salt. Be interesting if Amazon did it with them. Like would they became one <laughs> of the uh, became partners. Amazon became a partner. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. not? Uh, it can't hurt, right? More, more nope. customers, more places. Stat Counter and Net applications released their browser usage numbers uh, today. They're a little different. Stat Counter says that IE has 40.6% of the uh, market share worldwide, but Chrome has passed Firefox. Chrome has 25.7%, Firefox 25.2%. Net application still has Chrome behind Firefox. They also have a larger share for IE worldwide, 56.2%, Firefox with 22.1%, and Chrome uh, behind at 182 although they say if the trend continues where Chrome is gaining and IE and Firefox are declining, uh, then Chrome will pass Firefox by March uh, under their stats. So. Uh, it looks like this is nothing really new, but Chrome on the rise, i.e. not declining as fast as it used to be, but it is, and Firefox just sort of eroding slowly. I mean, Firefox appealed to the same people who ended up using Chrome. That happened to me. Like, I, I, was, I moved from IE, well, like Netscape to IE to Firefox, and then I'm like, okay, Chrome is just faster. It's lighter. It seems load page is faster. It just seems like it's so stripped down. Even though that now that there's all this feature creep and, and extension capability, it, it's it's feeding that same group. So I, it's almost like it's cannibalizing this this target group because IE is not going to start gaining anything. I don't think even with IE 10, unless what what's going to happen that are, are nerds really going to go from Chrome to IE? I, don't, I just don't see that happening. I also find that, and Tom, I know you're an exception because you've gone back to Firefox recently, but I, have. I find that. Out of curiosity and because I hear good things about a new browser, I'm exact, I went exactly the same uh, uh, procession that you did, Iaz. I went from IE to Firefox. I was very happy with Firefox for a long time. And then I heard enough good stuff about Chrome that I tried Chrome. Yep. But it's rare, I think, that you go back because you get used to the way that a browser looks and then you open up another browser and you go, ah, oh, God, no, 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 I don't, I, I'm, I, I'm too used to the way that it looks now. I mean, I still have that problem with Safari even just because I'm so used to Chrome. I like the interface, keep all my tabs. I was using Chrome and I really liked its tab management. I liked a lot of things about it, but it was crashing so much because of Flash and ironically, because of my use of Google Docs, that when Firefox latest version came out and claimed to have better tab management, I went back and tried it the tab management still isn't as good as Chrome, but mm -hmm. they've improved it enough that the stability I get with Firefox is enough to keep me using Firefox. I mean, you could say there are Chrome extensions where you can just disable anything that runs Flash, 
But that's not accounting for the people who are picking up Chrome. I mean, most people who are using browsers in general just want every page to work. They're not going to go out of their way to try to strip Flash out of pages. And Scott, you use what? Opera? Conqueror? Oh, you know me. Uh, what's that stupid one that was on the Mac for a while? I can't remember the name of my wife like so much. Safari? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although, nice Camino? stab there. You're a hater. You're a hater. No, I, I, think what I'm, I think what I'm the biggest fan of these days is, a, is an interesting combination of both Firefox and Chrome. I use Chrome yeah. for its strengths and Firefox for its strengths. And I hate that the, you mentioned it already, but ironically, some of Chrome's biggest weaknesses are using Google products. It drives me crazy the docs is so unstable sometimes in Google or in, um, in Chrome, I can jump over to Firefox and have no problem with Google Docs. So I, I don't get that. If they can get that solved, I may use Firefox less, but they both got their place and, yeah, you know, I'll stick with that for a while. Maybe Fine. we should all start using Flock again. We should all I say links. <laughs> I think we should all go to Opera. No, I'm going to links. Forget it. I'll text all the time. I'll see you guys at Flock. You know, that was my first browser, links. Is Family. Flock still around? Gosh, I... I made that joke. I don't even know if it's relevant. Rock melt. Flock browser. Sleep near. <laughs> Camino. All right, let's Camino, finish. that's it. Camino. Was that it? That Camino was it. Was that was All it. right, there we go. All right. Uh, Best Buy website shows that the Kindle Fire is their top-selling tablet, followed by the 16-gigabyte Wi-Fi-only iPad. A uh, range of other iPad flavors from different carriers are scattered throughout. So you could immediately make the argument that, well, Kindle Fire only has one SKU, and iPad has so many different SKUs. The iPad could still be outselling the Fire at Best Buy, but it's certainly not a bad thing for the Fire that it's at the top of the list. Uh, combine that with some analyst reports. Display search analyst Richard Shim expects Amazon to ship up to 6 million Fire tablets now this season. They had originally projected 4 million, so they revised it And wasn't 4 million it already? Up. It was considered to be an aggressive projection. Yeah, right? well, I, well, didn't didn't it go up to 4 million from like 3? Oh, yeah, you know, you're about right. The Amazon, exactly. The it, Kindle Fire. They, revi they kept revising it up. So it's double now. J.P. Morgan analyst Mark Moskowitz said he trimmed his fourth quarter sales estimates for Apple's tablet to 13 million from 13.3 million. That's not a huge percentage. Uh, Moskowitz even said that the lower forecast mostly comes because of limited growth in production, uh, production issues rather than uh, the fire. But he said the fire is a factor here. And he believes that over time the iPad will actually gain more traction in the business and educational markets so that they shouldn't worry about declining too much. But Kindle Fire, is it the, is it the gift this season? I think it is. The other thing is the iPad came out, what, in March? iPad 2, so people who wanted it already got it. And they're like, oh, great. It's not selling really well when everyone who wanted one already had one. I mean, not everyone. I'm sure there's people who don't have it. But, I mean, the thing is the Kindle's the new thing. The Kindle Fire right, it doesn't anyway. have the, well, For whatever reason, it doesn't have the glow of newness that right. the Fire has. And it's has, right 200 now. bucks. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's got a lot of things going for it. I just think it's... And it's Best Buy. I mean, the thing is people go to Apple to get their iPads as well. I mean... It, you go to Amazon to get your fire at times. I mean, it seems like... Well, Best Buy has a, a nice little Apple right, I'm just section. Saying, I, I just there, don't so. think that Best Buy's numbers are necessarily, necessarily indicative of a, of a greater trend. Yeah. It, well, no, you, well you, I mean, you got, I feel like Fire would be at the right. top of Amazon's list. Obviously, iPads. Well, it is. Get them yeah, Apple. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not even paying attention to that because, of course, right. it's going to be at the top of, of Amazon's course. list. Right. I mean, I think it's, yeah, I think it's the new, new thing. Uh, the price is right. People want the, you know, the new cool thing. I think a, if you went if yeah, you went ahead. to Apple, I'll bet you at Apple the iPads way out selling the fire at the Apple store. <laughs> just a guess. I yeah. don't know, Scott. I think you should check your source. Shaw Wu's <laughs> analyst stood outside the Apple store and counted zero Kindle Fires. I mean, wow! Yeah. See, that's I was at the Apple store something. this morning. Yeah, I asked for a Kindle Fire. I wanted to give it to, uh, to my mom as a gift. You. No, they just said. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. They're like, Don't you want a Kindle is. of Fire? Try Home Depot. iPad 2? <laughs> yeah. 64? 3G? Let's you some, wait, you want some Fire kindling? What? You know, yeah. I, I would actually say that the Fire is a really nifty device. I probably don't need it, and I think this is a weird time of year when we know the cycle of iPad releases to even get that concerned because an iPad 3 is right around the corner anyway in the spring yeah. or something like that, so I, I think it's a, a, a lot to do about nothing, basically. Let's kindle a fire by starting the news feed. Oh, Michael O'Leary, the Senior Executive Vice President for Global Policy and External Affairs of the Motion Picture Association of America, said that the industry is meeting with congressional staff to alter the Stop Online Piracy Act, a.k.a. SOPA. Leary said, quote, we will come forward with language that will address some of the legitimate concerns. He also took a swipe at opponents, saying they're just running out the clock, trying to preserve the status quo. But we'll change the act anyway, somewhat. 
The New York Times is reporting that TPG, which is a venture firm currently pursuing a minority stake in Yahoo, is talking with LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman for his expertise on the matter. They want everybody to weigh in at this point. In related Yahoo news, there's a rumor that somebody out there may pay 20 bucks a share. Kara Swisher at All Things D thinks it's just a stock manipulation ploy that appeared to have worked. So, all right, now we've, 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 we've heard every angle pretty much. What's definitive about Yahoo's sale right now is... Nothing. Right, right. All of this is rumor. People are unhappy with the Jawbone Up, the wristband that's meant to track your fitness and health. Complaints include the cap falls off way too easily, failures to sync with its iOS app, and battery issues. This is weird because this was in all things yep. deep, but I could have sworn I heard this yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Sarah was complaining about the cap falling this, off yesterday. This thing falls off, and it's on pretty snugly, but it still falls off. Jawbone CEO, uh, speaking to All Things D, said that these issues affect a minority of users, and the company's working on solutions. Jawbone is also offering free replacements if your up is defective. Hmm, good yeah. to know. So first of all, you're a minority. Congratulations. Well. Welcome to the club. And you can get a free <laughs> replacement. Okay. Sprint signed a four-year deal to pay Clearwire $1.6 billion over four years for access to Clearwire's WiMAX network. Sprint gets unlimited access to Clearwire's network for the next two years and limited access starting in 2015. Clearwire gets cash. They needed it to pay off a $237 million interest payment that the company had considered skipping which I tried that once with my bank. They didn't like it so well. So good thing you didn't have to do that. Clearly. <laughs> Barnes & Noble's second quarter was full of good news and bad news for the company. The good news is that the Nook tablet is the fastest selling Nook. The company has made and sales related to the Nook, digital sales and the devices totaled $220 million. The bad news is that Barnes & Noble had a net loss for the quarter and missed analyst expectations. Well, apparently Siri doesn't know everything. Several groups, including the ACLU, have taken issue with Siri because it has no information when it comes to finding abortion clinics. Now, Apple says, and they actually responded, the app is in beta, and this is not an intentional omission. It doesn't have a pro uh, Yeah, it's got everybody up in arms, a lot more than the fact that it doesn't have movie times. <laughs> Even though Siri isn't pleasing everyone, a change wave survey found that 49% of iPhone 4S users say Siri is the best feature about their phone. Ease of use came as a runner-up. The least favorite thing about the 4S was short battery life, uh, followed by the lack of meaningless 4G, whatever that is. I don't like short battery life either. Yeah, you know what? Me either. Google's added a new feature to Google Hangouts. You'll be able to make free phone calls in the U.S. and Canada from a Hangout. If you want to find the feature now, you have to visit plus.google.com slash hangouts slash extras. This is just the newest extra added to Hangouts. Older ones included screen sharing and Google Docs integration. YouTube's redesign is going live today. It matches that Google Plus aesthetic that has become ubiquitous on Google properties and puts YouTube channels right in the spotlight. When you log in, you'll see activities from users you subscribe to. The new YouTube will also pull video recommendations from Google Plus and Facebook. Let's move on to the randomizer. Randomizer. And the randomizer spitting out a cat today. Yeah. We, we needed this. Samuel Cox is Sarah Lane's new hero. He has developed the E Sleeper, an EMAC shell tricked out with lights and cozy blankets. But that's not all. An infrared beam is monitored by an Ethernet-connected Arduino. And when the cat breaks the beam to enter the e-sleeper, lights come on, a startup chime sounds, and the cat's entry time is recorded. When it breaks the beam again to leave, lights switch off, and a random phrase is tweeted to at e-sleeper1. It's like Virgin America for cats. Now, I pushed for <laughs> this kidding. story because the first half of the show was so depressing. We're being tracked. We're being, every, all our data is out there. But at least this cat's having a good time. But really, this is the same story all over again. He's uh, being yeah. spied on. A uh, cat's now <laughs> being tracked. Oh, no. The whole product. The oh, EMAC. Yeah. Cat wiretapping laws. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, see, the, it even knows when the cat leaves. Yeah. Oh, oh, lights wow. turn and off. there's a camera on him, so I mean, it's even worse. So you're also being watched, cat. Sorry for ruining that. Yeah, Happy Mac and Chad is like, so the cat likes these lights? That was my question, too. I think my cats would be like, what the, light turn therapy. off. But the, you're right. They were Virgin America lights, so they, kind of, they calm you <laughs> yeah. down. Right. Let's check what's on the calendar. What's better than that iOS game Infinity Blade? More Infinity Blade. Infinity Blade 2 is available in the iTunes App Store today for six ninety nine. dollars Scott, are you, have you stopped playing it yet? Yeah, it's, uh, I've only gotten really just barely into it, but um, I have to review it for another show, and I'm really looking forward to it. I played it on a giant 42-inch screen at a, at a uh, showing they did at, at a show here recently, and it was this giant touch screen, like a big TV, and people are swiping on it, and all I could think about was all the hepatitis everybody was going to give each other. <laughs> oh, no. Nasty.
Anyway, this show's good game, awesome. though. Good game. <laughs> Moving on. On, uh, uh, do you like bleach fast things? Who doesn't? Well, I'm not talking about Julian Assange in bed time. Whoa. Whoa! I'm what? talking about the wide Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, which has LTE and is coming to AT&T on December 4th. Yeah, we took it there. I'm disappointed <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you were going. And yes, I realized I had... that was much later than it needed to be. <laughs> no, that, that, that worked. <laughs> it needed to happen at some point. Had to dash your hopes. <laughs> Apple's much-anticipated Grand uh, Central Terminal Store will open on December 9th. The opening date was made official today with an updated message on the digital signage installed on the construction barrier surrounding the store. Just open already. Gosh. Sick of hearing about this. These days, you can't even trust an official source, which is what we did when we believed an official ASUS spokesperson who said the U.S. would get the Transformer uh, Prime officially on December 9th. Um, ASUS now says the release date will be December 12th online and December 19th retail. Warning, those dates could slip further if ASUS doesn't get enough pre-orders. Pricing will be $499 for the 32 gigabyte version and $599 for the 64 version. Finally, IDG announced that the much-loved GamePro magazine will cease publication after the next issue. The GamePro website will cease to exist in entirety on December 5th and will begin redirecting users to PC World's website. Blah. Sorry. Sorry to see you go. Game Scott, Pro. you were a big GamePro reader, huh? I read it a bunch when I was much younger. Um, I would say that it, it it was kind of written on the wall a little bit lately because in the last couple of years they've gone through a bunch of redesigns and, and none of those seem to stick or boost subscriptions. And I think that the writing was on the wall. It's sad because, I mean, it's, a, it's an old publication in gaming. It's been around since 89. It's kind of a big deal, but it feels like this is just going to keep happening. It's just too easy for me to go to a website or a blog and go, all right, I've got a month's worth of video game knowledge in about five minutes here. And I, why do I need to wait for a monthly magazine to come to tell me any of that? Yeah. Well, that's why they're going out of business. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. it. I, hate I, hate it. it. I, I don't want anyone to think I hate there. I love this idea because I hate it. I, I yeah. love a good read on a magazine. I love PC Gamer Magazine, for example. And I hope that they can continue as well. But it just, I don't know, it just feels, feels like their time maybe is up. I still read Life Magazine. Oh, my gosh. That's a great... Movie. I still eat Life cereal, so we have that. I still read highlights. I still think... the dentist. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Highlights for kids. Do they still have Goofus and Gallant? Maybe. Cricket. Mm -hmm. She does. <laughs> Cricket. She's a poser. Come on. <laughs> you don't really my read highlights. My kid at heart. Uh, let's see what's incoming. Incoming message. Our first incoming message is a video message from Darth Galt, uh, who... Helps us straighten out our misunderstanding of scorpions. <laughs> this is what happens when we use a metaphor. Like our, our audience tells us more than we ever our we all could said have it. hoped to know. Take it away, Darth Galt. <gasps> Ew. This is Darth Galt in Kansas City. To answer the question, do scorpions nest? Scorpions can be found under logs, under rocks, and they don't actually have nests in the normal sense of the word. Mm. They actually take their nest with them, with the mother scorpion mm. carrying their young. Delicious. Oh, On a side gosh. note, other valuable uses of scorpions are teabagging Johnny Cage, Whoa. clashing with titans, and melting faces. <laughs> this has been a Scorpion Report, brought to you by Darth Galt. <laughs> Everything you need to know about scorpions. Thank you, Darth Galt. I'm that's not hungry anymore. Was really, that was really funny, the teabagging thing. That's a total. That's a great video game reference. Hats off to that guy. And we also uh, got a wave file sent to us. Uh, I you wanted, know, you're not supposed to open those, Tom. Uh, well, we, that's why we I do. sanitized it. Yeah, we, <laughs> we used our sandboxing system. We made Ayaz open it. Yep. <laughs> and it turns out that we're owned. No, it turns out that it's a call about Ayaz's uh, desire for a map for the supermarket on your phone. Hey, TNT crew, this is John from Boston calling about Sharp 382, specifically the new Google Maps features. I totally get where IAS is coming from with regard to uh, grocery stores and supermarkets. Um, I, for one, have uh, been doing a little more of the family's grocery shopping as the new father of twins. My wife hasn't been able to get out quite as much to do some of that stuff she normally does. And up here in Boston, we have a lot of options for grocery stores. There's Roach Brothers, Stop and Shop, Star Market, Walmart, CVS, uh, Costco. Um, and my wife seems to know where every single thing we use is in these various grocery stores. Um, they're all in different places depending on the store, and I, no matter how many times I've gone, never remember where specific items are in which aisles, and oftentimes those signs at the head of, head of the aisles don't really do it justice. So um, I could totally love if Google went out and mapped my Roach Brothers and my Stop and Shop and a couple of other stores locally 
and if I put in applesauce, it would tell me what aisle to go to, or I could use um, Street View to maybe um, you know navigate there. The GPS part wouldn't matter so much. Um, I can see where that matters more in malls or some bigger yeah, it wouldn't work. Uh, facilities exactly. it's too small. get you to a storefront. But as far as finding um, specific items in a store, I think Google Maps would be great. Thanks. Now, see, I understand what Ayaz was saying because I have the same problem in supermarkets. I was just thinking Google Maps wasn't your best solution for this. Well, but I, supermarkets aren't providing a solution, so I, somebody should. I think what he's saying is we need a diff, we need another. Yes, they are. App. They have analog signs hanging above every aisle. There's like telling so things exactly. on the list, and but there's like a million they're categories. In, they're not and, useful. And they have food, people walking and that's where you through. Find I think we can ask. Jason, we established yesterday, no one wants to talk to people. <laughs> that's true. That's how but, you get but they're there for that reason. <laughs> you, you communicated. You, you have a bunch of diseases passing by because you're like, hey, grocer who, who didn't call in sick. And really, the disease thing. Yeah, that's right. It's not. Well, look. If, if, if Scott's afraid of hepatitis with the touchscreen, I can be afraid of getting sick at the supermarket. <laughs> well, then you might as well just not go anywhere. I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I psyched about, that's so why I'm psyched about Amazon Prime, and I'm psyched about Google's plan to ship everything So in the Bay Area. If, if, Google, right. if Google did this, would they send dudes in the, in the Safeway with like a, a little hard hat and a camera that rotates around, and they just kind of pass through? <laughs> no, it would be unmanned, right? Well, and so they'd, have, have to have, they'd have to be doing it all the time because they, they constantly change where stuff is. Well, you could just I mean, use your own phone you. is always in the same aisle as peanut butter. Pro tip, okay? Sometimes peanut nice. butter is in Good its own know. aisle or it's with the, with the bread in different supermarkets. I've been in Boston. I know what he's talking about. It's scary. <laughs> well, Some scary. people do things crazy. Let's finish off with an email, shall we? Sean in North Pole, Alaska. That's nice. a great name for a place. Thought this Are might you interest Santa? Tom. <laughs> yeah. Sean is Santa. Um, University of Alaska Anchorage is chopping down the internet speeds in the dorms, apparently as a result of complaints from the RIAA. They're college students in a dorm, but it goes along with due process. Is the RIAA substantiating the reports, or is it a PFA as in pluck from air? So, yeah, according to the KTUU.com uh, story, that's the TV station reporting on this, the dorm is going down to 2 megabits per second, roughly half of what some students are used to during certain times of day. Not enough to stream high-definition movies, but enough to get schoolwork done. This is the stupidest thing in the world. Okay, this is w bad legislation in action. We have a federal law that says the RAA can complain about known piracy on a network to a university, and the university has to respond in some way. Doesn't it? It's pretty vague on how they respond. So the University of Alaska said, all right, we'll cut down the bandwidth. You know what that does? That actually makes it harder to do the legitimate things like using Hulu and using Netflix, which is going to force them into using BitTorrent, which is more efficient over low bandwidth connections, and they're going to steal more. Well, then it was a crappy connection to start with four megabits yeah, down. Exactly. That wasn't that, like, if it was like, okay, you were getting one gigabit per, per second, I could see, oh, I maybe you want to cut it back a little. Although four? It's, the, it's the R, is it the RIAA? Yeah, it's the RIAA, so they don't care about the video. <laughs> yeah, steal all the video you want. We don't care. We're the RIA. Talk to the MPA about that. Uh, yeah, these the complaints were apparently double in 2010 what they were in 2008. So it's not like they didn't have a legitimate complaint. It sounds like they were they were finding more illegitimate activity happening on the uh, the internet. But the slowing down the internet for students is the solution. This is absolutely the wrong way to go for so many reasons. Uh, because it's not like schoolwork can only be done on low bandwidth connections. Uh, what about the guys who are trying to access high-speed bandwidth connections to other universities uh, for streaming video back and forth, live video? Uh, there's a countless number of reasons that you would need a high bandwidth connection in a university situation from your dorm room. Uh, yeah, just ridiculous. But even two megabit, uh, a two megabit connection is enough for me to get to go and torrent the new Disturbed album. Exactly. Like it's not, it's still enough to do that. I don't, I don't know what they're thinking. It's crazy. Disturbed, huh? Well, I'm kind of a fan, so That's I bought cool. it though. I bought it. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have. Two yeah, megabits. Right. Per, no, I'm just <laughs> um, all right. Thanks, everybody, for uh, watching the show. And especially thanks for uh, submitting stories and voting on the stories at technewstoday.reddit.com. That is the place to go. Join the over 3,500 folks who go in there every day and rate stories Ooh. and submit stories and help us figure out what we should cover every day. It's one of the things we look at to find out, okay, what's buzzworthy? What's the audience want? Uh, and also don't forget to submit your favorite moments of TNT or any show on Twit for the year at twit.tv slash best of. You will get to say, I made that show happen. That's right. When we, uh, when we put it. You'll even, you'll even get a credit. Yeah. 
if it's that awesome exactly. and you're the only one, if, if you and everybody else recommended it, you might not. Is that otherwise, something yes. that might interest you? Go to twit.tv slash best of and submit your favorite moment. That's it uh, for this episode of Tech News Today. Scott Johnson, Skojo. Mm. Mm. What do you what do you got to talk? We t we already talked about the instant Star Wars, <laughs> yes. the old Republic edition. There, uh, there is so much going on, Tom. I don't even know where to start. You know what the best thing to do? People should just go to frogpants.com, check out the site, tons of podcasts in there, including a couple that little old Tom Merritt's on. And while you're at it, follow me on Twitter. I'm I'm at I'm at Extra Life, and that's a great place to kind of see the hottest goings on in my life. You want to see uh, hot Scott Johnson? Follow him on Twitter. Mm. That's right. That's it for this episode of Tech News Today. You can find us on the web, twit.tv slash TNT. You can email us. Our electronic mail address is TNT, the at symbol, and twit.tv. You can also give us a call and leave us a good old-fashioned phone voicemail. Free call in Butler, Indiana, 260-TNT-SHOW. Darren Kitchen's back with us tomorrow on a Friday. See you then.